started, going right back to the beginning, is that I built my own aeroplane. Um, it's something I always fancied doing. Um, I, I'm a builder, I'm a maker, I'm a creative person. Um, so the idea of creating and building my own aeroplane was absolute dream, you know, from making models as a child. Um, so I built an aircraft called a Flitzer, which is a wooden biplane based on a 1920s design. Little single seat, open cockpit, aerobatic biplane. Um, when it was finished, I went to uh, a propeller manufacturer in the UK. It was a guy, it was a hobbyist if you like. Um, he made a propeller for it, but it didn't perform right. It didn't make the aircraft fly as it should. So I went back to him and said, the propeller's not right. He said, well, you ought to buy another. I said, well, okay. So he sold me another one. Still didn't work right. It just got me thinking. I started sort of studying and reading and learning about propeller design. And what I learned more than anything is every unique aircraft needs a unique propeller. One which is designed specifically for it in order for the aircraft to perform correctly. So the design of propeller is really quite finite. You know, down to sort of tenths of a millimeter um, makes it perform correctly. So that led me on. Um, my family background is with manufacturing. So putting my interest in aviation and flight performance together with manufacturing, I thought, well, maybe we can use a modern computerized machine to machine a unique propeller which will suit my aeroplane exactly. So that's what I did. I made this one propeller, put it on my aeroplane, and it worked. It worked really well. It's what I wanted. Um, my friend said to me, well, my propeller, my plane's not much good. We make me one? I said, well, I'll try the same again. So I made him a propeller, he put it on his plane, it worked really well, it really performed. Um, just because the design was finite, it was just every little bit of design was exactly for that aircraft, how that aircraft wanted to fly, to give them the right cruise speed, the right takeoff distance, the right climb rate. Everything was all just finely tuned for that aircraft, and it worked. And I thought, I've got something here. Um, and at that time, we used to sort of meet with our planes at flying meets and stand around going, it's a shame you can't get good propellers anymore. You know, it's a shame you, know, that you can't get the right propeller. Um, there was one guy um, who was making a lot of propellers in the UK, but he retired. Um, he was about the best person there was. He, he retired. So, so it was a good moment. Um, I, was, I was between careers, if you like. I just finished doing something and I had a little bit of money to sort of invest into it. So I thought, you know what, it's now or never. I'm going to try something and pursue a passion. Um, so that's how it all got started. As much as I like to have gone out and bought a machine for making propellers, it's been an awful lot easier. These things don't exist. It's such a niche industry. So um, my father is a, a great lifelong engineer. So between us, we designed a machine to make the propellers. So um, we designed it and built it and cut the steel and machined all the parts and bolted it all together and worked out the electronics. So we've got this big, long machine um, which automatically makes a propeller and we can put a piece of wood in, press go and walk away from it and it buzzes away and chomps along and, and you can, it's almost like you sort of see a propeller rising out of the block of wood it sort of looks like as this propeller appears in front of your eyes. People approached us and said that we need propellers for our Spitfires, um, so we're, we're not too happy with the current supplier, um, can you manufacture Spitfire propellers? And we said yes we'd love to but we need to know information, we need drawings, we need specifications, we need data on the propeller. Um, and when we were looking, we were asking around, just took us to dead ends. Um, out of the blue, I got a phone call from a company in Gloucester, about 10 miles from here. Um, they said that they acquired uh, many drawings of propellers um, in the 1950s. Um, they were, when they took over another company, they took over the company and they acquired all these drawings. They weren't propeller makers, but it came with their acquisition. They put these drawings into big drawers and they were just shut away for decades. They're remodeling the offices, they're making more space, they decided they want to get rid of these drawings. Um, they were about to put them in the skip with all the other builders' waste, and someone in the company said, look, we can't quite do this, so we, someone must want to look at these drawings before we throw them away. Um, they googled propeller maker, and they were just amazed to find that 10 miles away, there was someone making propellers. So they rang me up and said, look, we've got these old Horden Richmond, which was the company, um, the old Horden Richmond propellers, um, propeller drawings, um, so it was an amazing, lucky, serendipitous find. Just that one phone call got us going.